I just remember writing that verse for location, the first verse, and thinking I'm gonna write this from a girl's point of view. If I was a girl, what's the first verse that I wanna hear this summer? I wanted girls to be able to get behind it and, and feel like, that's them. In this clip from one of his appearances on Genius, Dave alludes to one component of the secret sauce that has made him one of the most lyrically inventive artists in modern times, and that is step number one, broadening your scope. Since he exploded out of the streets of London at 16 years old, Dave, otherwise known as Santan Dave, has risen from a prodigiously talented MC within a still largely marginalized UK rap scene to the point where he, along with Little Sims and Central C, are beginning to garner the attention of stateside audiences. In fact, when Sench and Dave combined forces for the Split Decision EP, they landed in the top 10 of the Billboard Global Hot 100 while naturally taking the top spot spot in their native land. Capable of both acerbic political commentary and witty bars that'll leave you mesmerized by the sheer quantity of wordplay that he's fit within the space of one verse, Dave is as adept at uplifting audiences as he is quick off the mark with masterful put-downs. On the new track Sprinter with Central C, Dave demonstrates this ability without ever reaching for the dictionary. Instead, using his natural sharpness to make something hard-hitting from simplistic sentiments, spitting what's hers is hers what's mine is too heard that girl is a gold digger it can't be true if she dated you ap baby blue papers pink i'd probably hate me too in the example he gave to genius we see the cornerstone of what makes dave so thrilling to listen to whether on a singular track or across the course of a dual ep where a lesser rapper couldn't fathom another gender's point of view, Dave knew that stepping out of his own headspace would best serve the interest of the song, maximizing its impact. Across Location and other tracks from his two phenomenal studio albums, Psychodrama and We're All Alone in This Together, having the awareness to think about how his lines will be consumed by others is utilized on a regular basis to empower and resonate, providing his music with a universality which has allowed him to overcome the bias that some American audiences have long harbored against UK rap. But I'm far from my best is probably my favorite line in the song as well. It's not flashy, but it just means what well, I said. A girl sitting down 25, listening to location can feel I I'm far from the rest. I'm not like these other girls. A guy could sit down and say, I'm not like everyone else. I'm far from the rest, but I am far from my best and there's always more to do. Just as Dave realized that stepping out of his shoes would improve the potency of his songwriting, the Neighborhood Records flagship artist isn't solely trying to empathize or tap into others' emotional states. He also inflames the brain with his immensely slick, layered wordplay. Here, we have the next key to Dave's approach that makes his bars such a joy to behold and that we can directly learn from him, and that is step number two, make your rhymes multifaceted. Be a babe station. Girls want to chase as a status thing. Chasing status, like chasing status to music producers, as well as chasing status as in caring about the attention and the fame and all that stuff. Girls want to chase because of status. Guys want to chase because of status. It's just what people do. In this excerpt from his second appearance on Genius, Dave outlines something which is a recurring trend throughout his work that different inspirations can coexist alongside one another, ensuring that whether you wish to take things at face value or scratch beneath the surface of what he's saying, it'll still be pleasing to the ear and the mind either way. Throughout his catalog, Dave employs this tactic of stacking meaning atop one another regularly. While double entendres and slick lines are a strong suit of his, Dave also has a tendency to explain his bars just to make you catch them. Not in a way that it's pedantic, but one that retains its entertainment value. On Breathe from back in 2018, Dave began to play around with this technique, spinning way before Deliveroo came on ends, we had green on wheels, that's a bike with food. Claiming that he is a dilettante who jumps into everything until I find one thing that I enjoy more than others, Dave may seem like he turns out these witty lines at a moment's notice, but the truth is that it can be an agonizing process to be that good. The antidote to someone like Eminem who seems to be capable of producing rhymes at the drop of a hat, Dave is so purposeful in everything that he says, he describes songs as gold or silver, something rare or precious, while telling another interviewer that at times tracks can take up words of two to three years to complete. I wake up and I write a lyric, nah, I can't do the voice. I wake up and I write a lyric on the way to the shower and I stay in the shower until I turn into a prune, he told GQ. I try to write, then I think, 
damn, I cannot afford to fail in anything. That pressure is exhausting. It wasn't initially exhausting, but I can definitely say that it is now exhausting. It's exhausting. I'm tired. An insane work ethic indeed. If you yourself are an up and coming artist that is looking to develop that level of daily grind like Dave, but not overstress yourself so much, our Master the Art of Freestyle Rap in two weeks course will not only teach you how to have daily practice and going off the top with daily drills, but comes with a ton of free bonuses that will explode your lyrical wit and punchline game like Dave, such as the Rap Battle Boot Camp taught in tandem with battle rap icon Corey Sharon. You can pick that up right now by visiting the first link in the video description. Now, for a man who claimed that he retired from rap at 13 when he tried to write a rhyme and everyone hated it, Dave puts an immense amount of pressure on himself. A piano virtuoso, Dave treats his bars with that same degree of care, and here we have the next thing that makes everything he says so innately powerful, even if it's a frivolous bar, in step number three, treat rapping as your responsibility. I was originally listening to a Kendrick Lamar, and then there was a song, Blood, but it's not even a song, it's just like the intro. I, I wrote it to the instrumental for Blood, and I think there was, you know, coming a time where it was important to just say something on the album, to say something that was bigger than me. A lot of the albums about myself, but I think it was about just making something extrinsic, speaking for myself, but for everyone else. A man who isn't afraid to stand on the shoulders of giants, Dave treats his craft with such a seriousness and sincerity that he feels the need to throw himself into everything he makes. In essence, when he's making something fun and arrogant, he's gonna give it his all. Then, when it's time for him to touch upon the inequities of the world he inhabits, it's the same situation. But where other rappers are perhaps guilty of getting on their soapbox to such an extent that it subtracts from their music's immediacy or catchiness, Dave knows that it's always important to keep it engaging as opposed to an exercise in delivering a sermon on the mount. The best musicians, the people I listen to myself, because I am guilty of what I'm talking about, they say something that has impact but also has replay value, he remarked to GQ. And that's a minefield that I'm still trying to get my head around. A song that doesn't alienate the listener. It's very, very, very difficult to do progressive politics or delve into what's going on in the Middle East or question where tax is being used and austerity and stuff like that on an instrumental at 140 BPM. Evading a cookie cutter image in any way whatsoever, Dave retains both his ear for melody and his sardonic style to the point that he can meld the heavier content with something that can be easily digested. Pause. Remarking that I want my music to have content but also be listenable, he has worked out how to juggle this with his commercial sensibilities in a way that many rappers could learn from. Case in point, a track like System from We're All In This Together, where we stowed an overarching socioeconomic message away within a very flashy couplet. She wanna do SMS, not save my soul, that's spend my savings. Waiter, you can bring more champagne in for all the times I was living in stress. I wanna own all my stuff, but the system's built so that we're living in debt. Describing rapping as nothing more than thinking on a piece of paper and putting it into rhyme and flashy lines in between, Dave may have lofty ambitions of changing the world, but he doesn't ever intellectualize what he's doing to a point that it's no longer fun to listen to or construct. However, it's certainly not because he's afraid of criticism. Here we have the next crucial step in the book of Dave, and that is number four, don't fear divisiveness. Negative comments about what you do are good because they show that you are an individual. And the moment that you're individual and you're like existing and you have an identity, like not everyone can resonate with that. So I saw a lot of like negative comments saying like, do you know what, like it's a lot of good songs and like, yeah, he's telling a story, but I don't think I'll listen to it very often because it's heavy. And that was okay for me because like my identity as a rapper, as who I am, is exactly what they're describing. And Although Dave may be able to skyrocket to the top of the UK charts today, he never set out to be everyone's cup of tea, nor has he sterilized his music to make himself a seamless fit into the marketplace. Instead, Dave has made a career out of doing him and has reaped the rewards for doing so. So next time you consider neutering yourself creatively or leaving some of your more intricate punchlines to one side in the search for mass appeal, just just remember that the UK rapper championed by Drake and beloved all over the world has never once done that. I think that in this day and age, especially the direction that music's going in, the social media and the present, it can be very easy to feel like what you do isn't of value because of 
the way that people receive it. So if you're listening and you're a musician and you're a kid, like, just do what it is that you do. And I think that good music is going to last. And I think that that's something that's for certain. An intensely attuned individual who can convey what he's seeing around him, whether it's in the club or within the poverty-ridden neighborhoods that he grew up in, Dave will always provide a unique viewpoint. And that, in the simplest terms, is the fifth and most important thing that budding MCs can extract from Santan, and that's number five, be a storyteller. I wanted to have a narrative, somewhat self-discovery. And I think if you listen to the album as 11 separate tracks and then you listen to it as a whole, it's just two completely different things. The tracks are meant to be aware of each other. Track four is meant to lead on to track five. They're meant to, yeah, live in the same world. And I reference other songs and songs. I wanted to have a concept and a narrative, but still have something that on its own could achieve some level of Commercial While discussing his acclaimed debut album with B-Dot and Elliot Wilson on Rap Radar, Dave got to the heart of what has made him a success in both long and short form as for him what he does is an extension of that old tradition which dates back to hip hop's formative years. Whether in one bar or across an entire project, the London based MC always seeks to deliver a tale that you can follow. And while they can work as part of a larger framework, it's also important to make your music work in any circumstance. While other isolated tracks from concept records may stumble when taken out of context, Dave produces every track as though it is an episode, and while there are benefits to taking the entire journey, they can also be enjoyed in a contained fashion, thus yielding the number one hits that he's had in recent years. When you hear Who I Am by track 12, by Who I Was in track 1, that journey, it feels like a journey of years. Like, yo, this person has been there, this has happened, that happens, I meet this person, the slang I use, the arrogance, the voice, it is canon. He informed Line of Best Fit prior to his second album's release. In essence, while Dave's tracks can and often do have a broader conceptual framework, what his approach teaches us is that when you're looking to be high-minded in your work, the tracks should be enjoyable in standalone fashion too. Having told Complex that sometimes it's just about the vibe, like on Tiago Silva and Wanna Know, Dave knows that not everyone, particularly in the attention-deficient era of TikTok and instant gratification that we're in now, is going to want to listen to an entire album from start to finish. As a result, each story must be riveting in its own right, as too should every single bar that might strike a listener's ear. A man who optimizes his output for maximum enjoyment and engagement, Dave is the quintessential rapper of today in this respect, and quite frankly, it'd be only to the benefit of the industry at large if more people look to follow his lead in this sense. Now we'd like to see you in the comments, what is your favorite two bar punchline from Dave over the years? Comment with it below and if you're an artist yourself coming up in the game, be sure to visit the video description for our Master the Art of Freestyle Rap in two weeks or less course. I've been your host, Drew Marcy, the big homie Drew for How to Rap. I'm out.